Hello everybody and welcome to back to Little Blue Homestead and it's late. And for me it's Christmas Eve. And my Christmas present to myself came in, so that means I have to build it. The Christmas present to myself slash the house and the farm is a warm is I'm going to do uh, warm composting so I can get so I can get warm casting. So I'm making myself a warm bin. And the worms came in tonight, which they were supposed to not come for another couple of weeks, but, well, actually, till next week, the New Year's, but I'm so happy that they came in that I want to get them settled in their homes. So, I got home, did my errands, did what I needed to do, and now I'm going to build the worm bin. And the reason why it's important to me is because of the soil that we're dealing with here. And where we, my mom and I, get our soil from, we get our soil from our local composter, the city comp, um, the city um, composter, and they take what mostly is brown, um, is brown waste, the bark, tree limbs, some um, yard waste, and they mulch it, and that's how we get our compost. So a lot of it's missing nutrients in it. It's missing calcium, potassium, it's missing a lot. And we have to spend a lot of money on amending the soil. Now we could buy a lot of soils from the hardware store or from a local um, garden supply, but that can end up costing a lot of money. So my plan for the next season is trying to make our garden grow better and healthier without having to spend so much. Now we do do our own composting here, but part of that composting is, it takes a while, just like compost uh, with warm farming takes a while, but I wanna have it ready for the spring. So I planned in January to get this built, but it came earlier, and I'm so excited. <laughs> However, I need to get it built because Worms are live animals, and I want them to be happy. Like my dogs are happy, like my daughter upstairs is, and my house is happy. I want these worms to be happy, so <laughs> it's late, and I want to get started on this. So, with the worm farming, you use a base, a bedding, for these worms. And one of them that you use, either peat moss or um, coconut core. I'm using coconut core, so I'm going to get that started right now. So usually when you get coconut core, you either get it in a bag or you get it in a brick. And you rehydrate this. So I'm going to get this started to rehydrate so I won't have to wait on it. When you do coconut core like this, you usually get a bag like this. So I'm going to use the bag, rehydrate this. And then get started on the bin. I got a three bins, so I'm doing a three towers. So I'm doing a two bin tower with one catch bin. Catch is the liquid that comes out of the top two bins. So we're going to get started with drilling holes, um, plugging, making a um, drain hole, and then put material in it. So first thing first, let's rehydrate the coconut um, core. All right, so here's the coconut core. And all you do with this thing is just add water. Now, woo! I'm gonna add about two thirds, maybe almost half of the water in there because I want it to rehydrate and it's going to do it quickly, but also slowly. So. water into this thing. Okay. I added about a third of water and the bag is leaking a little, but that's perfectly fine. But look at this. It's already starting to rehydrate. So I'm going to let that sit and 
I'm gonna go change clothes because I'm about to get really dirty and I don't want to get my Christmas dress dirty. I will be back. Okay, sorry about that. My SD card filled up and I had to go and move some stuff around. So I was saying these are 10 gallons because I didn't want them to be too big. And I'm mainly going to be the one handling this stuff. So if you, bigger bins means more material inside means heavier the weight. Now I know I can carry stuff, but I am not that strong. So I got a bin size that I could handle. And I think that's what everybody should do is figure out what you can handle when it comes to these bins or warm farming or anything. So I got my bins. The first bin I'm going to go ahead and drill a hole. I'm going to put the drain hole on the side of these bins. One, because it's something I'm comfortable with. I can see the drain hole. If I put it in the bottom of the bin, then I might have an issue. I have, give me one second. So I have this little valve right here that I'm going to be using. And now I can drill underneath like this and have the valve open from the bottom and drain. You know what? I think I might do that. I think I'm going to do it in the bottom. I just have to be careful on where I put this. Yeah, I'm doing the bottom drain. So let me go ahead and get started with drilling these holes. So let's see here. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and just put it right here because this would be the deepest part in the bottom of this bin. Yep, that would work. All right, let's stop this. Please do not critique me on my drilling skills. I'm still learning. too small but that's the biggest drill I have so let's make this bigger So right now the valve is open and now the valve is closed. So the valve's in, I'm going to silicone the opposite end and stick the bolt through it. Okay, so we got that fixed, and we got the silica. Again, don't make fun of me. I'm doing this as a DUI, and I'm using what I have at my local stores. 
And probably being a DUI is learning from your mistakes. And this is my first one. So I'm having fun with this. And plus, it's my Christmas present to myself. So I got the bottom fixed. Now, one thing you wanted to do is make sure that your, your tubs do not sit on each other. You don't want it to sit on your valve. So I'm going to go ahead and check that. You want to draw, you want to put holes on the bottom of your t um, last two bins. The holes are going to be so one, the worms can go through the holes to the food or to the material that they need to get to, and two, for water in, to drain down. You don't want the water to collect in the dirt where your worms are at because you can drown them and you don't want it to be too dry so you want to have that moisture there too so that's why I'm using this bin system because at least if it gets hot or warm it can start to get humid and that water on the bottom can slowly leach back into the top especially here in Texas where things dry out way too fast so I'm going to go ahead and put some big holes in the bottom so that the worms can get through. And I'm going to put quite a, um, a f maybe a dozen. You don't want to put so many holes where you ruin the stability of the bottom, but you want enough holes where the worms can get through. So that's the plan. on the bottom. Trying to remove all the plastic pieces real quick. Okay, so I put holes here because this again is the deepest recess. So if water does collect, at least it can drain out. So I got four holes. And then I got holes for the worms to pass up through. Now I'm going to make smaller holes on the sides up, up on the top of the bin. Now I'm making these small holes is so that we can have some airflow in this. Worms need airflow. And they breathe through their skin in the body. So they need to have fresh air. Well, not fresh air, but they need that. They need to have a supply of air. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to put the holes on the side of my bins and not in my lid. The reason why I'm doing that is because just in case 
I have something try to get into it the top of the lid. I don't want to ruin the stability of the lid by putting the holes in it. So for me, the holes are going to go on the side of the bins because I have nosy birds, nosy dogs, and I'm afraid of them not knocking the bin over, but finding a way to get the little claws and start and get into those holes. So having it on the side for me is a lot safer because at least that way it's hard. They can smell, well, usually they don't, the bins don't have that much smell, but at least on the sides, it's, for me, it's a lot safer than having the hose on the top of the lid. Because I've seen way too many lids get destroyed by my dogs. So let's get a small bit and put that in. There's my holes. Now one thing, because the holes are on the side of the bin, you don't want to put too much material where the worms are able to wiggle themselves out. So that's one thing I will have to watch for. That's a con of having the holes on the side. But for me, it's a lot safer because I know my dogs. Oh, I know my dogs. So the bins on the side, the holes on the side of your bins, you don't want to have your material come up past that because the worms were, can get out. So we're going to keep the material a good inch or at least half an inch away from the holes. to make sure I get all the plastic out. So now I'm going to go ahead and stick the material in here and also get this ready for worms. So So here is my cocoa core. As you can see, that block rose up pretty well. So I'm using this as my bottom bedding for these worms so that they can have something on the bottom and I like the fact that this is moist and it usually stays wet longer than regular dirt so this is going to be our first layer and all I'm doing right now is fluffing it to make sure it's all of it has got rehydrated and then I'm going to add it into the bin
so there's my cocoa core and then I'm going to start adding my material that I want the worms to slowly start breaking down so I'm throwing in paper in this case toilet paper rolls so they can start breaking that down. I'm also be going doing food scraps and newspaper, and I'm gonna try because those are good. One thing you do not want to feed worms. It same thing with comp, with regular composting. You don't want to put meat products, human waste, pet waste inside of it. It's no good. And you basically want to follow the exact same rules when it comes to regular composting with when you're composting with worms. Is that you want to follow, try to get as much green and brown in as possible. Did you hear that? There it goes. So the... So the wild dogs and the wolves are, are out tonight. I'm listening to them howl. And it's quite awesome what listening can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and just put this in here. And then I'm going to get some of my compost, which I have on the side, and get that in here as well so that can, they can help break that up some more. And my compost has food waste in it, garden waste, the anything and everything from my garden goes into my compost. Oops. Usually I use these toilet paper tubes to start seedlings. But I'm going to do this for right now. All right, there we go. I got some of that in, so I will be back. I'm going to grab me some compost, and I'm going to get ready for worms. All right, so I'm back. I got topsoil and compost added in here. Whoops. That's going in. Whoops. So there's that. I have to add a little bit of water and then so when the worms slowly start to decompose this stuff and you get worm casting big sticks and straw it's not really going they're not really going to um, break that down so I'm not really worried about that but I want to get a lot of green material in here so they can slowly stop breaking that down and some more other material in here. But for right now, because they're coming from shipping, I want to see how they do. I'm going to go ahead and go inside and grab the worms and make a little hole for them to have a little home for now. There you go might need to go get me some more compost. Let's go do that real quick. All right, so I'm gonna add some grit to this and what that is is gonna help them di digest. But it's also, for me, this is eggshell, which is something that they can digest and help them. And it'll also help my garden out because I need a lot of calcium in my garden. So I'm going to put a little bit of that in there. Make a little bed of greens for them. Make a bed of greens for my worms. Now, I don't want to put too much food in here because I want because I want to feed them once a month, once a week. Open this up, check them out, make sure they're healthy. 
But right now, since they were traveling, I don't know how hungry they are and how long they've been traveling for. So I did have, I have a little bed here for them. I'm going to put the worms in here. Put a little bit more dirt. Cover them up. Them up. And then leave them be for now. And check on them later. We'll check out on them within next week. Well, actually, sooner than a week. So maybe three days. Check on them. See if they how much they eaten. And then go from there to see how much they would eat. Now, it is winter. And they would die, uh, eat slower. So they may not eat as fast as they would in the summer. And their appetite might be very very hungry right now if I can open this bag and it is dark so they're probably sleeping wormies right now and I'm about to wake them up hi wormies let's get these babies out and just dump them in there Look at these little babies. Oops. You see them? Look at that little baby right there. Yeah, I woke them up. They were having a nice nap. So I got about a hundred worms. There's a wormy right there. So I'm gonna let these guys be real quick and hurry up and get them covered. So, put the warmies in there. Now I get some more dirt on them. Maybe give them a little bit more food. They're probably napping right now because it is dark. And they have a biological clock that they use. Like everybody in this world has a biological clock. They do too. Here, cover yourself up. I know you're a little cold warmy. There you go. All right, let me go get some topsoil. And we'll get these guys covered. I got some more material. And I'm going to cover these guys up. these guys are set and then last thing I do that's it so now what I'm going to do is get my warm bin stacked so that would be taking this bottom piece right here with the spout again. This time I have holes so it's not as bad. So I will take, so what I do is go ahead, take this bottom one, then put the warm bit on top of it, and let these little guys eat and get beautiful warm castings from them. And you are what you eat, and that's where worms are definitely are what you eat. So if you feed them what they need to be fed and what your garden needs, it would definitely help in the long run. Warm castings are wonderful and beautiful. And there's something I need in my garden. So I'm so happy my Christmas gift came in early. <laughs> and like I so so happy my Christmas gift came in early. Hopefully this first bin it will take roughly, depending on where I put the bin and these worms, it will take roughly between three to, three to four, some say six months before I get worm castings from them. A good bunch of worm castings. And again, this is my first time, so you guys are watching me experiment, my very first experiment, worm castings.
in live worms. They are so tiny, they're very small worms, so most likely there's a couple of hatchlings in there too. So we got the worms, got them nice and cozy. I'm taking this worm bin and I'm taking it inside the house. It's still cold out here and I do plan on putting the bin someplace nice where it gets some shade, it gets some heat, uh, shade and so it's cool in the summer and it's not as hot and then it does get some sun in the winter time. However, it is night time and the dirt I use have been outside with me, with, outside with me so it is also cold. So I'm taking it inside so that at least the temperature in the house can warm up the dirt as, as for the night so these worms won't be as cold because I don't want to kill them and it's roughly maybe about 40 outside yeah I'm surprised I'm not shaking right now but the wind is not blowing the wind is not blowing so that's a good sign so I'm going to take these guys inside and tomorrow I'm going to put them in their permanent home and we'll go from there and hopefully in a couple months we have some fresh beautiful warm castings that I can put in the garden as a supplement to help with what we deal with like I said we get our our compost well not our compost but we get our uh, topsoil our dirt our what we garden with from a local composter now they don't like I said they don't do green composting that's your green waste, your le your green leaves and stuff like that. Most of it is mulch. They let the mulch break down over time. And that is good, but yet bad because it doesn't have all the nutrients that you would by adding fresh cuttings and mulch. And we learned that last year. Well, not last year. Was it last year? We had certain areas of the garden do well and the certain areas did bad because of it. Because it was missing a lot of nitrogen and a lot of stuff that only green clipping, green clips, <laughs> green waste can do. So hopefully these babies will help get us to that nutrient level that we need. They say it takes up to seven years for your for your ground, your garden to be where you want it to be. And these babies are going to help us get there. And hopefully we get some nice fresh vegetables. So I'm letting you guys go. I'll talk to you soon. Sorry. Tuned out. The night's beautiful. And somebody's popping fireworks. And you can see the fireworks in the background, in the foreground. What was I saying? So, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and put these babies away. And I'll talk to you guys soon. I'm filming this on Christmas Eve. And I'm just happy that, one, we made it this far. And two, that for now... I'm at a place where I want to be. My mom and I have started. We started canning four years ago, but we officially started canning our own food this year. Four years ago, we start. We got into canning because our fridge <laughs> quit on us, and we had nothing else to do, so we ran to Winco. Grab as much uh, mason jars as we could and we canned. Because we just got back from the grocery store and we had all these fresh green beans and carrots. And they were going to go bad. Because the fridge went bad. And we had some meat that we needed to handle. And that was going bad. So we went. I quickly looked up on YouTube. Jess. And all these different YouTubers, and we just from there started canning. And I'm just thinking, this was the first year we did fresh green beans from our garden. We did carrots last year, 
those tiny baby carrots, globe carrots we got. We did that last year. And we got green beans this year. We did squash. We got peaches from the peach tree that has been growing on this land for a little bit. I'm so excited about that. We can those. Can green beans. I have... I grew yard longs. Which I was so excited. To grow yard longs and can them. And they were good. And they came from my garden. Squash. Acorn squash. Yellow squash. Zucchinis. And all the tomatoes you can eat. We're trying new things out this year. And we got some seeds coming in from Baker Creek and Southern Exposure. And we're praying and hoping for another good year. And maybe next year will be a better season for everybody. But right now, I'm just happy. I'm happy that... My Christmas present came in. <laughs> and I'm just happy to be alive. And I hope you guys are too out there. If you're not spending with family, they're in your pray for them. Your family is always with you. They're in your heart. And the reason why I say that is because it's true. Being a being a Navy veteran. You have to learn. Your family is always in your heart. Because you spend a lot of time at sea without them. And if you forget that your family is not with you, you kind of go into a depressed mode. And now that I'm, since I've been out for a little bit, my Navy family is always in my heart. The people that I learned to be an adult with, and I'm happy because they're always with me. And the only reason why I bring this up is because one of my good friends, he got out, he became a pastor, and today he was, he's from the Philippines. So he was a pastor in the Philippines, and I was listening to one of his sermons. I was listening to his Christmas visual sermon. And he's good. And I just think back, wow, I knew him when he was a Navy with me, when he was a fireman with me, working in the bowels of the ship with me. And now he's a pastor in a church. And I am a dispatcher with a garden. And maybe three or four people listening to me talk. So, for me, it's been good. And I hope it's been good for you. Think of the happy stuff. Think of the happy stuff. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year's. And I'll see you on the bright side. This is Tasha Martinez signing off. Stay safe.